Hello, everyone. Please join me in a moment of silence as we honor those who have lost their lives on this tragic day. Thank you. Now, I do admit, I don't know how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna do this, you know, cause I'm kind of, I was kind of reluctant to do this, but I feel like I needed my share or I needed to, you know, explain sort of my side to the story, you know, or, you know, my, sort of my experience, well, for those of you wondering, no, I was not there. I was not in New York when it happened. You know, luckily I was safe and I was safe and sound in school here. But like I said, I just felt like I needed to have a say in this as well. For those of you who remember, it was a regular normal Tuesday morning in New York City. People were going up on by their lives, going to work. News anchors were just doing their jobs, and remember, one of them was like, "It's a quiet Tuesday, not it's a it's a quiet Tuesday morning." Let's keep it that way, or, or something like that. I don't remember who that was. <laughs> the irony in that. And then, as you all remember, that normal day would soon turn into a hellish nightmare that we would only dream of. But sadly, that's not the case. What turned it out? to be was reality, right before our own eyes. Sure, most of us saw this from the television, but for the ones who were at New York and saw this firsthand, it would be heartbreaking for anyone to witness this by themselves. Especially those who knew of their family members and friends in that, in that tower, who went down with it. It's tragic. And it's the most tragic event since the Pearl Harbor incident back in 1941, which, you know, enabled the Americans to fight in the World War II. But this was different. This was definitely a loss on our part, a major loss than what Pearl Harbor went through. I mean, I don't know what the death toll was for Pearl Harbor, at least. I know the death toll through 9-11, but it's just, it's horrible. Sure, I may, I may not fathom what everyone went through that specific day. I just want to understand it. Like, I just want to pay my respects for everyone, for everyone who lost their loved ones and everyone who, <laughs> who suffered PTSD through this day. I know that that, that feeling just doesn't go away in one day or it doesn't, it doesn't get cured like it's just something that just sticks with you forever. It's not something that can just melt away from your brain. It's living rent free in your brain. And there's nothing we can do but just to talk about it and talk about our feelings towards this event. I mean, should I call it an event? I don't, I don't. But yeah, the, um. This is tough. It really is. Yes, like I said, I, I didn't experience this ever. You know, I was here in Florida when it happened. For those of you who are wondering what ha where I was when 9-11 happened, you know, I was very, very little. I was like, what, five or six? In I know I was in elementary school and I don't really remember much. I, I don't even remember anything at all. I think we just went our, by our, our, our noble day, normal days, you know. None of, luckily, none of the uh, none of our parents called to pick us up early, just in case you know there was going to be another attack. Maybe not just New York. Maybe what if all the nations, all the states in this country? It's like, do you ever think about that? Like after, like let's say you know after the twin towers went down and all the other events happened in the Pentagon and even in that. Fourth, that fourth plague crash that 
crashed in Pennsylvania, I think. And you're just thinking, what next? What's going to happen next? Or is, is something else going to transpire? Is hell coming back again? That's what everyone wants to know. I'm just flabbergasted by the whole thing. You know, of course, you know, I, well, of course, you know, my parents didn't experience it as well, too. You know, they were at work and they saw it on television as well. But <laughs> coincidentally enough, my dad knows someone who worked at the Twin Towers. Uh, well, spoiler alert, he, he survived. He, he, to this day, he's fine and well, living his life. So there's a happy ending right there at some capacity. But uh, my dad's friend was in the lower towers when it happened. And I remember calling him for a school assignment like years ago. And he told me what happened. So according to him, like I said, he was in the lower parts of the, ta the, of the, uh, the North Tower, I believe. South Tower or North Tower, I don't remember. But you know, yeah, it, it was the North Tower. And according to him, when I talked to him, he said, well, he, 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 went, he went by his, it was a normal quiet day in the office. You know, he was just on his computer doing paperwork. And he said he felt the vibration of the plane when it crashed. You know, it, it didn't really concern him at that point. He was just like, huh, maybe, uh, you know, maybe a plane, maybe um, something was passing by or something like that. I don't know what other... What other things can cause a vibration like that? So, to his curiosity, he got out from his office and he went to the window and saw something. Or he, or he like tried to go find out what, what happened and he saw nothing. And I think he said he saw smoke, but I don't know. I think he said he saw smoke and he thought it was just one of the chimneys or something like that. I don't, I don't know. Or maybe one of the chimneys got fried and they had to go get someone to fix it. I, I don't know. I, I don't remember what his part was on there. So then he finds out that, you know, he thought everything was safe and sound. He thought everything was okay. So he went back to his office, returned to his paperwork, went on through his normal day. And then a few minutes later, he gets a phone call from one of his coworkers. He answers it. And the guy on the phone is like, or the person on the phone is, uh, tells him, hey, what are you doing on the, what are you, are you still inside? And the, the guy says, uh, yeah, I'm still inside. I'm, I'm doing, I'm still doing paperwork work. I'm sorry. Let me back up a little bit there. When he goes back to his office, he saw that the whole, the whole place was clean. Like the whole place was quiet. There was nobody there. All right, back to this. Like, like, what was that? Oh yeah. He says, uh, yeah, I'm still doing paperwork. Where is everybody? It's, it's quiet here. It's weird. And the guy on the, or the person on the phone was like, no, you need, you need to get out. You need to, you seriously need to get out. The building is on fire. There's smoke. Everybody's freaking out. Get, you need to get your butt out of the tower right now. And he put the, down the phone and he obeyed. He listened to the guy. He got down from the tower and he saw the smoke. He saw it with his own eyes, the smoke coming out in the upper section of the twin tower. You know, and luckily he got on the boat. He sailed the way to Jersey, safe and sound, and the the rest was history. And like I said, he's still he's still living to this day. It was a lot. It's probably a lot different than what you saw on the television. And that's another story for that too. Uh, back in junior, yeah, I think this was in my junior year. Uh, when my English my English uh, teacher was telling us his story that. Yeah, he was in New York, but he wasn't in Manhattan when it happened. And according to him, he did feel the vibrate. He was like a, in a college far away from downtown. And he said that he felt the vibration through, like, through the window when it was like cracking it up. And it, like he was asleep at this point. And a few minutes later, one of his college buddies turns on the TV and he wakes up to find to look at the screen. And to his knowledge, and like to his perspective, he thought it was just a movie playing. I was like, oh, okay. All right. And it's just probably a crappy action movie. And then one of his friends was like, no, dude, this is real. Look. And to his amazement, to his surprise, it was in fact real. It just dawned to him that everything what he saw on the television was real. And then he said what 
I think he said after the Twin Towers, or before the Twin Towers fell, him and, his, him and his buddies went to downtown to try to help people. He tried to help the people that, you know, were injured or, or were covered in smoke, tried to help them, give them water, tri- blood transplants. You, you, know you know the whole story of what happened there. And he said that, he said it was a lot different than what you saw on the television. He said going into that, going into downtown was like a, going into a war zone. Because people were freaking out. There was one guy who was just losing his shit. Like he was just like throwing, he was just like losing it. Like he was just like arguing with the police or something like that. He was just like, he was depressed. He was just, uh, need I say anymore? <laughs> and a little uh, funny story. You know, I do remember, you know, when I was little, I kind of remember, you know, hearing from my parents, like telling, or my mother telling me about what happened. Uh, you know, I remember little details of it, but I don't remember fully what happened, you know, because they usually showed like interviews of people who lost their husbands or wives or friends in one of the towers as it came cr- tumbling down or something like that, or one of the interviews, but I never really acknowledge it. I never really understood the tragic event that it was. I just never really put, paid attention to it. I didn't even know. <laughs> it was funny enough because I remember in my freshman year, I was in a journalism. I was in a journalism class, and my teacher had arranged for us to pick up a story that happened on September 11th. And I was just like, okay, let me just go. Let me once I get home. I'll go, th- I'll go through my recycling and just look out through the new- today's newspaper and just find out what, you know, what, what happened locally. What, what, you know, something like that, something innocent like that. And then, you know, I was telling my mom what I was doing and she's like, do, do you not know what happened September 11th? And I'm like, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. And she's like, 9-11, come on. It, it was 9-11, don't you remember that? And I was like, no, I, I mean, can you blame me? I was little, you know, like I was a little kid. How could I, how could I remember this to be honest? I was a kid who enjoyed cartoons and you know, he was into his own fantasy land, okay? He didn't get a sense of reality when he was grown up. And that's when I got to, when we were, when the day came, they showed that one documentary where they got all the footages of different camera angles when they were like ne- next to the towers and the people reacting to it from the hotels and from Times Square. Yeah, that, that, that was sort of my introduction to 9-11. And you know, now it was like at that point, now I understood it. Now I understood that feeling. Hopefully all of us, I don't wanna jinx it, or I don't wanna jinx it or anything. Well, I know that the Afghanistan war is done, but to be frank, we can never really anticipate another level of horror, like how September 11th, the September 11th attacks did. No one can ever predict what could happen next if we can experience another another event like this in the future. Because I don't think I don't think any of us would want to wake up to hear about this. Hell, I mean, like this summer, look what happened in Miami and Surfside. That tower war went down and took the people with it. You know, some survived, and it, I think. I don't remember what the death toll was. I think it was about a hundred people were trapped inside and none of them made it out alive. And immediately everyone got flashes, flashbacks to 9-11. It's inevitable, these type of things. It is really inevitable. There's nothing we can really do. We can, we can always be cautious. We can always like try to make sure something like this never happens again. But will it? It's hard to predict the future when we don't know the outcome events. But that's it. I. That's all I kind of want to talk about. And before I go, I just want, uh, I just, before, the point of this video is not to really just to tell the experience or tell, you know, what I feel about this whole event and not just to bring people together, but just sort of Think about yourself. Just think about where you're at right now. Just think about your life, you know, because you never know if it could end up like that. 
especially with these people that survived the events. Just look and look at life as it is now. Because you never know when something's going to take your life. Something, you never know when it's going to be taken away. You got to live life as it is right now. You got to live your day as you go on. I, sorry, the phone's ringing. I know it's a little distraction. I think the point of this video is to remember what these towers symbolized back in the day, not the tragic of resu results of what happened. But I think feel like people should reminisce about what th these towers brought, what these towers inspired people to do, what they, what they brought to New York as a whole. And not just New York, but to this country as a whole. Of course, you know, from econo economic purposes, you know, it was part, of, it was the main focus of, it was the main part of Wall Street. But these towers symbolized hope. And I don't think that's something we can ever forget. Just because we lost two of the most beloved icons 20 years ago, doesn't mean we can still keep them in our memories, keep that hope in our hearts as we move on to the future. And I, I haven't been back since they were starting to build that, um, that one World Trade Center that they just built a few years ago. I do remember walking around Ground Zero and this is before they built the building. And the last time, and well, that was like 2010 or 11. And then when I went back in 2012, I think, or 2013, they were start, it was like halfway completed. All I wanna say is, I want us to remember the positive aspects of these towers. A happy memory is what I want from everyone watching this video. And to anyone watching, my question is, of course, where were you when this event happened? Where, do you, where were you? Did you remember it? Do you not? Did someone tell you about it? When, when, was it that, when was it specifically that you understood or when was it specifically that, that you were introduced to this event? Is all I'm asking. I mean, that's that's it. That's all I ask, and I only all I only ask people to remember the heart of New York before this event. Don't remember the tragic results. Remember the joy and amazement these two towers were.